Confession time. How many of you have opened Premiere Pro for the very first time, saw all the features and you just coasted immediately? You were like, nah, -uh, not, not doing this. Raise your hand. I mean, <laughs> I know, right? I have been there too. The first time that I opened Premiere Pro, I saw all the features, all the tools, all the options. And I was like, where do I start? How do I start? And for that exact reason, I made this video. And the best part is it will only take you 20 minutes to learn all of this. 20 minutes, I know, right? If you don't believe me, that's fine. I'll put a timer on the screen right now and let's go. The first step is to open a new project. And when you open a new project, go to file, new, and project. Here you can pick your title for the project and the location, so where you want to save it. Now there's a lot of other things that you can adjust, but we're just gonna ignore everything and we're gonna press OK. Once you've opened the new project, this is the bit where you may be a little bit intimidated with all the options. Right here you see all the workspaces, and then down here there are the tools that you can use. Here there are some other tabs. But don't worry, because all we need is one workspace, which is the editing workspace that we're in right now. And all we need is two tools. We need the selection tool and the razor tool, which I will go into in a little bit. If you want to customize the workspaces, you totally can. All you have to do is just grab one of those windows and just drag them to wherever you want to direct them. But I'm going to show you everything in this default window. The second step is to import your media. And before we do anything, I'm going to show you how to do this the right way because when you start something new, it is better to learn it the right way. And in my opinion, the right way is by doing everything in an organized way. So first we're going to create some bins. And in order to create a bin, all you have to do is click on this little folder which says new bin. In order to import the media, double click on the bin and then double click on the empty window. After you imported your media, you have two options. You can either view your media in the icon view or in the list view. However, I personally like to work in the icon view. And if you see that your media is not in the right order, just click on this and then select name. So now, as you can see, everything looks nice and organized and that's how we like it. So now it's time to create a timeline and the timeline in Premiere Pro is called a sequence. And there are a few ways how you can create a sequence. And the first way is by going up to file, new and sequence. But you can also click right here on new item and click on sequence. This will bring up this new sequence window with a lot of presets all available to you. You can just pick one or you can go to settings where you can change the frame size and the frame rate, for example. But if you don't know what settings are right for your video, what I would recommend you to do is to close that window, go to the clip that you're going to use and then right click on it and select new sequence from clip. As you can see, now a new sequence is created with the clip on there already. Now, of course, you can still delete this clip if you want. Let's take a quick look at the timeline. So what we see is we see two parts. We see the video part and the audio part. Now, if you want your video track to be larger, all you have to do is drag it up. And if you want to see the sound wave of your audio, you can just take that line and drag it down to make it bigger. Now, if you want to reset this, all you have to do is double click on the track and it will reset the track to the default. All right, guys, we are ready. Are you ready? I'm, I'm so ready to edit this video. So the first thing, as you see, we already created a sequence from clip. So our main clip is already on there. So now it is time to select our B-roll. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bin called B-roll. I'm going to double click on the first video. Now, here's the thing. If you want the entire video on your timeline, then just drag the video to the timeline. But most of us probably want only a part of the clip on the timeline. So you can do that by going through your footage and then when you're like, this is where I want the clip to start, 
press I, which is the in point, and then go through it until you're like, meh, this is good enough. Press O on the keyboard, and that is how you create your in and out points. And now, if you drag this to the timeline, you will only drag the selected part to the timeline. So now the question is, do you want the entire video, so video and audio on the timeline, or do you only want the video or only the audio? If you want to use it as B-roll like me and you only want the video part, all you have to do is click on this and then hold it and drag it to the timeline. This way you'll only get the video part. All right, so I'm going to do that for all the clips. Now that we have set all of our in and out points and everything is on the timeline, don't worry if you already put your clip on the timeline and you find out that you want to trim it a little bit. You can enable the razor tool by pressing C on your keyboard or clicking right here. The razor tool is the tool that you use to cut your clips in bits. When you're done with the razor tool, you can enable the selection tool again by pressing V or clicking right here. If you've already put several clips on your timeline and you trim something, you will most likely create a gap. Now you can easily get rid of this gap by right clicking on the gap and click on ripple delete. And you can also trim the clip by clicking and holding one of the ends and then just drag it to the left or right. At any time, if you wanna play the video or if you wanna pause the video, just press spacebar. All right, we've got all of our clips ready. The sequence is ready. Now it is time to get a little bit fancy. And when I say fancy, I mean transitions and effects. We're going to go to effects right here. And this is where you will find different folders. There is one for video transitions and video effects, for example. If you want a video transition, all you have to do is open up this folder and choose your transition. So for example, if we want to go for a classic cross dissolve, you open up the dissolve folder and click on cross dissolve. Now, if you want to apply this transition, all you have to do is drag this transition to where the two clips meet. As you can see, it will create this yellow bar on top of the two clips, basically connecting the two clips. Now, if you want the transition to be longer, all you have to do is just drag it out. And if you want it to be very quick, all you can do is like, ee, go like that. Done. The same goes for effect. So if you want to apply an effect to your clip, all you have to do is either browse through this folder called video effects or use the search bar if you already know what you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for some blur or you're looking for a flip, whether that is horizontal or if you're very cool vertical, you can just type in flip and you'll get the effect. I use the search bar all the time because it saves so much time. And the same thing applies here. If you have an effect and you want to apply it to your clip, all you have to do is drag that effect to the clip and it is applied. Now, if there's anything you want to change about the effect, open up the effects control tab. This is where you will also find the very basic effects, like the position and the scale and the opacity. All the effects that you add to a clip can be found right here. If you have any questions, please feel free to pause the video and go to the comment section and ask me the question. Or if you want me to go into more detail about a certain feature, also let me know in the comments so I can do a follow-up video. Now, if you have a video with both video and audio, in the top part of the effects control tab, you'll find all the video effects. And if you scroll down, you'll find all the audio effects. And this is where you can, for example, change the volume of a video. Talking about audio, I think it is about time that we add some music to our video. And if you're wondering where I get all my music from, at the moment, I get all of my music from Epidemic Sound uh, because they have a great library with both music and sound effects, which is super, super useful. And the best part is that if you want to try it out, they have a 30 day free trial. So I have a link in the description box you can click on to get a 30 day free trial. It's definitely worth the money because it's free. So definitely check that out because I really recommend it. Okay, so music. The same principles apply. Just double click on the music, set your in and out points if you want to select only a part of the music or if you want the entire track, just drag it to the timeline. 
If you want to change the volume of the song, untoggle the keyframe clock, the little blue clock, and then you can lower the volume. It already looks really good, but I understand that some of you might want to add some titles or text to the video, and you can do that by clicking on the graphics window, but this is confession time. I have never opened that before because usually what I do is I just enable the text tool, which is what I'm going to show you right now. And I promise you it is just as easy. So when you enable the text tool and you'll click on the screen, you'll see this red box appear. This is where you can type the text. And after you've typed the text, go to the effects control, scroll down a little bit until you see all the settings for the text. Here you can change the font, the size of the font. This is basically your time to style your text. You can apply an effect to your title the same way that you apply an effect to your clip. However, usually I just add some basic animation to the text. For example, zoom it in a little bit or reposition it. And you can animate the text very easily by creating keyframes. So for example, we will start at 90% and that will end at 100%. And the further that you put the keyframes from each other, the slower it will be. So the slower it will scale up or zoom in. This, this can be the moment where you're like, yeah, cool, video looks cool, I'm done, I'm gonna export it. But if you really want your video to stand out, it is time for color correction and color grading. Now, if you don't know what color correction is or what color grading is, and what the difference is between them, I made a video about it, which I will, I will link up somewhere here. I'm not really sure where it is. I'll link it up here for you to check out so you will know the difference. But for now, I have to admit, I lied a little bit because we're going to open up another workspace and I said that you only needed this workspace, but don't worry. When you open up a color workspace, you will see on the right side that there is basic correction, creative curves, color wheels, HSL secondary and vignette, which is a lot of things. But basically what you need for basic correction is the basic correction tab. Hey. So what you're going to do is you're just going to change the temperature a little bit and the tint if needed. You can change the exposure, you can make sure that the whites are white and the blacks are black, very important. And if you want to add a LUT to your video, all you have to do is open up the creative tab and then where it says look, click on the drop down menu, go to browse or just choose one of the LUTs that are already available to you. Now I understand that this may be very unclear, but I would recommend to first just start playing around with it a little bit. And if you want me to do a dedicated video about how to color correct and color grade your footage, make sure to leave me a comment and let me know that that is what you want so I can be of assistance. Now, if you decide to add a lot to your footage, there is this one thing and it's called the adjustment layer. Just go to new item and adjustment layer and then drag that adjustment layer on another track on top of all your videos. And then just drag it out, apply the LUT to the adjustment layer and see what happens. Because now this LUT is applied to all of your videos and you don't need to color grade all of your videos separately. Like I said, it's a gift. It saves you so much time and it just makes life so much easier. Now, when you're ready to export your video, go to file, go to export and click on media. This will open up the export settings window. And what I would recommend you to do is to go to preset and then click on that drop down menu and go all the way down where it says YouTube and just choose one of those presets. That is the best part about these presets. It's to make things so much easier when you're just starting out with Premiere Pro. Just use one of those presets and then right here where it says output name, click on the blue text and now you can change the name of the video and you can choose a location of where you want your video to be saved. When you're done, hit export and Congratulations, you just made your first video in Premiere Pro. Like I said earlier, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. And if you think you're ready for some more advanced stuff, because now you're basically a pro, 
click on this video and make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell in case you want to be notified and so we can see each other in the next video.